What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're going to be making a homemade weapon, so let's get started. Alright, so to start things off we're going to select the cube and start blocking out all those main shapes. Now I'm just going to focus on keeping everything low and poly for now, it's just going to make it easier for me to figure out how I want these shapes to look and then later on we can smooth things out or add some more polys where we need them. So let's go ahead and just continue blocking this shape out and then we can move on to other things. Alright, so that handle's blocked out, now let's move on to the top of the wrench. Now if I wanted to keep this mesh really low in poly, I probably wouldn't be cutting out some holes into this piece of geometry. Now I thought it would just look a little bit more realistic by booleaning out some holes, so that's what I end up doing, but I just wanted to make a note. It's not completely necessary to make these holes into the model, you could probably get away with just keeping it solid. Now usually I like to clean up the model during the UVing process, it just allows me to work a little bit more freely while I figure out how I want these shapes to look. Now just to make my life a little bit easier down the road, I decided just to clean up some of this topology really quickly. I was pretty happy with those bevels and the blocked out shape, so I decided just to fix up a few things before moving on. And all I'm really doing here is just using the multi-cut tool to connect vertices and deleting unnecessary edges while trying to keep four-sided faces.
Alright, so majority of this wrench is now blocked out. Next up is just that little cylinder, that basically a little scrolling wheel that raises and lowers that top piece of the wrench. I don't know what this piece is called, but it's just a small cylinder. So let's go ahead and just create that. We can scale it nice and small, and then we can fit it into our model. So let's just quickly go bevel out some of these hard edges and then we can start adding those top teeth on our wrench. Now I just add this directly into that top piece of geometry we have, but if you were looking to have a lower poly model, I would probably create this as a whole separate piece by just adding in a little cube and scaling that in. Now I just select those side faces and extrude them outward. So like I said, it's in that piece of geometry. And then later on, I just have to add a bunch of edge loops to connect all those vertices from the teeth. And that just creates a lot of polys and you can probably get away with reducing a lot of those by just creating a separate piece for those top teeth. So I just wanted to make a note of that in case you wanted to have a lower poly mesh. So continuing on with the model, we're just going to play around with some of these shapes so they fit a little bit better together. Alright, so next up is creating some small bevels where those teeth are. Now this shape was a little bit tricky, I just had to go in with my multi-cut tool to create some extra edges and connect some of those vertices. So let's go ahead and bevel these edges. Alright, so next up was moving on to those bottom teeth. So similar to the top, we're going to bevel out those outside edges and then we can add a bunch of edge loops in between to create all of those little teeth.
All right, so those teeth are looking good. Now we're gonna quickly jump back to that scrolling wheel thing, and we're just gonna bevel out some of those edges and then extrude in a little strip in the middle where we're gonna add some cool little graphic or bump effect later on in Substance Banner. All right, so it's slowly starting to look like a wrench. We're just gonna go ahead and add an extra small extrusion into that handle, and then we can start beveling out some of those edges. So let's go ahead and start bringing this wrench to life. So really quickly, I'm just gonna clean up some of those areas we did around those bevels. Now, I usually do a lot of the cleanup like I mentioned during the UVing process, but I find if you just leave it always to the end, sometimes you can just build up all these areas and the model can really quickly become very messy. So to avoid that, I'm just gonna really quickly clean up some of these areas and then we can come back to it later. Alright, so now it's time to add some top teeth onto our wrench model. So what I'm going to do, like we did to the bottom, I'm going to add a bunch of edge loops and then we can start beveling out some of those edges. Now I'm not going to worry about how those top vertices are all connected to the top of my model. We'll worry about that later on when we start cleaning things up. I just want to get those teeth into place so I can start visualizing how this model is going to look. And once again, just to avoid having to attach all of those vertices from all of those edge loops, you could just create this as a separate piece of geometry, which I probably should have done. And that way I just don't have to worry about adding all of those extra polys later on connecting all those vertices. So cutting those little corners can sometimes save you a lot on your polys and on your time modeling. And you would be surprised with what you could get away with. I just wanted to quickly make a note of it. There's so many ways you can tackle these models. And I just decided to build it directly into the geometry. Oh, and one more thing, you can probably already tell, but I'm just working on one side of this wrench, and then once I'm happy with how everything's looking, I can just add an edge loop directly in the middle, chop it in half, and duplicate it over to create the other side.
All right, so really quickly, I'm just gonna clean up some of this topology. Those bevels made it look quite messy. So just to save myself a little bit of time, I'm just gonna do a little cleanup. All right, so now that the handle is looking much better, I can go ahead, chop it in half, and duplicate it over to create the other side. All right, so the handle's done. Let's just quickly fix up a few small things. So as you can see on the bottom of this piece of geometry, I clearly forgot to either select some of these edges when I was doing a bevel or something happened. I'm not exactly sure, but it's a quick fix. I'm just gonna go in with my multi-cut tool so I can connect those vertices so I can have a proper bevel that goes around that edge. All right, so now it's looking much more like a wrench. Let's go ahead and add a few small details. So one thing I'm gonna do is add a sphere. We can chop it in half and we can add a small little bolt that's gonna be on the side of the wrench. I also want to create a little hole that's on the bottom of my handle and I'm going to have a little piece of metal or something hanging from it. So let's go create a really small low poly cylinder. We can boolean out a little hole. And once that hole is created, I just need to go into my multi-cut tool and target weld tool and just clean up all those vertices so every vertice is attached. All right, so the wrench is looking good. Next up is creating that little knife that's gonna be sitting in between those teeth. So let's go ahead and create a cube. We can scale that out into a rectangle and start blocking out the handle of the knife.
Alright, so that main handle shape is all blocked out. Now I wanted to have a bunch of small holes that were booleaned out into this handle. So we're gonna create another small low poly cylinder, very similar to how we did that cutout on the bottom of our handle. Now we're just gonna create a bunch of them, like seven or eight, and then we can just combine them into one mesh, and then we can boolean out all of those holes into our handle. And just like the other one, we're gonna go in with our multi-cut and target weld tools, and we can start cleaning up all of those vertices. Now if I really wanted to keep this model on the lower poly side of things, I probably wouldn't even boolean out all these holes, and in Substance Painter I would just draw some black circles or something into the mesh to act as if some holes were there. So you could definitely fake it if you wanted to, but I wanted it to look a little bit more realistic so we went ahead with those booleans. So I'm just going to speed this next part of the video up since all I'm doing is just merging all of those vertices with my target weld tool and then using the multi-cut to connect all of the other ones that aren't connected to anything. Obviously trying to keep it to four-sided faces if I can, but triangles aren't the end of the world either so don't stress too much about it. I've just been working on one side of the handle just to make my life a little bit easier, but now that things are looking much better, I can go ahead, duplicate it, flip it around, and then bridge those edges back together. And then all I have to do is just double click all of those little holes and then bridge those together as well. Alright, so those handles are looking good, now we can create another cube and start blocking out the blade.
Alright, so the knife is looking good. One really funny thing I realized after I was on literally my last render, I noticed how if you were to fold this knife closed, it wouldn't be able to. The blade doesn't have a spot to go into. It's a piece, it's like a hard piece of geometry. So what I should have done with those handles, which is scaled one really thin, duplicated it to the other side so there's a space between both. So then it's more practical and realistic. So if it wasn't tied up to this wrench and you were to close it, it could actually close in on itself. Now, it obviously isn't a big deal as you probably wouldn't even be able to notice. And you probably didn't notice until I even mentioned it. So I didn't bother even fixing it, but it's just a small little detail I would probably redo if I were to redo the whole thing. So I'm just gonna quickly take a look at the model and then I'm gonna add in a small little groove on the top piece of my wrench. I'm just gonna add a couple edge loops and then just scale it in. So it's just a little indent on that piece of metal. All right, so next up I wanted to create a little Boolean cutout into this piece of geometry. So similar to those ones that we did on the bottom handle, I wanted to do the exact same thing with this shape. Now rather than creating a little cube and beveling out those edges, which I could have done to create that boolean, I already have that shape basically created already from this piece of geometry, so I'm just going to duplicate that over, and then I can select those front faces and extract it from that piece of geometry. Then I can just delete everything else so I only have those front faces, and I can just duplicate that to spin it up and reattach it so I have a nice rectangular rounded out shape already that I can boolean out that cutout. So all I'm going to do is just extrude this, give it a little bit of thickness, and then I can go ahead and boolean out that shape into that piece of geometry. Now I end up scaling the shape afterwards, so all of this work was kind of unnecessary and I could have just created a rectangle and just beveled the edges, but either way we got the job done. Alright, so now that that boolean is created, once again we can go in with our multi-cut and target weld tool and we can clean everything up to attach all of those vertices. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with how the wrench is looking now, so we can move on to those small little wires that are basically holding that knife into place. So I'm going to do that with the sweep mesh. So we're going to go create an EP curve tool that can draw out some points in roughly the shape that I was looking for, a little wire. So all I'm going to do is scale down that curve really small and fit it in between one of these holes so it wraps around the top of my wrench. 
and then we can play around with those points until I get it into a shape that I'm happy with. Using that sweet mesh, we can turn that curve into a piece of geometry. So once that wire is created, I can go ahead and enter soft select mode by hitting B on my keyboard, and I can just play around with the shape a little bit more to get it to fit a little bit more snug with my model. I want that wire to be as close as I can to the wrench so it looks like it's tied on tightly. Once I'm happy with that shape, I can go ahead and duplicate it and slide it over right beside it so I have two pieces of wire that are going through that hole. Alright, so now we're going to do the exact same thing for those top pieces of wire. Now I first try reusing that same curve we created for those bottom ones, but it doesn't have enough points so I end up removing it and just creating another curve for those top pieces. I just wanted to create a few extra points so it fits a little bit more snug with the model. Alright, so rather than making you watch me create all of those other wires, I'm just going to skip ahead to when all of those were done and we can move on to creating the little tied knots into them. So as you can see, I went ahead and created all of those other wires that are helping hold my knife into place. So next I wanted to create those little knots that are on these little metal wires, basically as if they were like tied together and holding them into place. So to do that, I'm going to create a little torus and scale that very, very small and fit that on top of our wire. And then I'm going to create another small cylinder to fit into that as if it's the top end piece of the wire. And is it just me or does the word torus not seem fitting for this shape? I feel like it should be called a donut or something. I don't know, it just seems incorrect when I say it for some weird reason. Let me know in the comments if you agree.
All right, so that little knot is complete. Now I can just go ahead and duplicate this a couple of times to place all over my model, wherever those wires are. And all I have to do is just slightly change each one so they look different from one another.
since this cloth handle is only one-sided, I'm gonna take each end of those edges and just extrude them inwards a little bit so it looks like it's thick and it doesn't have just one side to it. Alright, so for the rest of the modeling part of the video, I'm just going to speed it up because all I start doing is just cleaning up the model and adding a few extra bevels and attaching all these vertices. Basically, what I originally was planning to do was create a lower poly model and then smoothing it out and adding subdivisions to create a higher poly model. I decided to go a different route near the end of this video. I decided just to bevel out those really hard edges and I can go in with that multi-cut tool and start attaching all those vertices. So that's exactly what I do. I just clean it up a little bit. Some of the topology was looking a little bit messy and I was feeling a little bit crazy this week. So I decided just to change things up and do it a little bit different than usual. So let's go ahead and just finish up the modeling part and then we can start texturing.
All right, so the modeling is finished. Now let's just quickly go over how I did those UVs. All right, so here's the model in its finished form. I decided to go with one texture map, like I mentioned, just because I wanted to more lean towards a video game asset and one texture map would be plenty for an object like this. So that's exactly what I did. And here are all those UVs. I made sure to straighten those shells where I could just to help utilize that UV space. And I was pretty happy with the result. So now it's time to jump into Substance Painter and we can start texturing. All right, so now in Substance Painter, I can go load in my FBX file from Maya. And once that's loaded in, I can take a quick look to see if everything's looking correct. And if it is, I can go over to my texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, and I can choose my output size. So I chose 4K and make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh since we only have one mesh to work with and then we can bake out those textures. All right, so to start things off, we're gonna work on that wrench so we can get that main material out of the way. So to do that, we're gonna go over to our Smart Materials tab and I'm gonna look for a base material for my wrench. I decided to choose the steel painted worn material that comes with Substance Painter and I can just open up that folder. I went down and turned off the rust stain layer. It was just looking a little bit too much. I could add my own grunge later on and then I can just scroll down further and start tweaking some of those colors. Now I don't need to worry too much about getting everything perfect right off the bat. It's looking good enough for now so I can just right click this whole material, set that to a black mask and I can assign it to my meshes in my scene. All right, so now it's time to add a little bit of dirt and grunge on top of our paint. So to do that, I'm gonna add a fill layer and I can go over to our masks tab and I can choose whatever masking effect I wanna add onto that fill layer. Once I'm happy with that, all I have to do is just change that color and drag around those sliders depending on how much dirt and grunge I wanna show. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing a few more times. I'm gonna start layering on these different masking effects. I always find the more layers that you do, the more realistic it looks. So let's go ahead and start adding a few other dirt and grunge effects. All right, so that wrench is looking much better now. It's not nearly looking as clean and it's looking a little bit more beaten up. So next up is just working on those other wrench materials. I'm gonna go back to our Smart Materials folder and I'm gonna choose that iron old material that comes with Substance and we can assign that to our wrench. All I have to do once again is open up that folder and start tweaking some of those settings. All right, so really quickly, I'm gonna jump into the renderer just to see how these materials are looking. And all I'm gonna do in here is just turn off that background image and remove that ground plane, just so I can have a better look at the model. All right, so now it's time to add a little dirt and grunge effect to this material as well. So once again, we're gonna add a fill layer. I'm gonna to go to my masks tab and I can choose whatever masking effect I would like and drag that directly onto my fill layer. Then all I have to do afterwards is open up that folder, adjust the colors and settings to whatever I would like, and then we can continue on and add a few other masking effects onto this material as well. And once I'm happy with how that material is looking, I can go ahead and right click, set that to a black mask, and I can assign that material to my meshes in my scene. All right, so now that we have that material applied to those meshes, I'm just gonna quickly continue tweaking a few of these settings. I'm just gonna add a few extra dirt and grunge effects just to get this a little closer to what I had in mind. So I always find that the materials look a little bit different in the editor than they do in the renderer. So you'll see me constantly jumping in and out of both as I tweak these settings just so I can see how these materials are looking.
All right, so now that things are looking a little bit closer to what I had in mind, let's just continue on with the other meshes. So next up are those little wires, and that's easy. I just wanted a clean metal material, so we're gonna go to our Smart Materials folder. I'm gonna choose that Silver Armor material, and I'm gonna apply it to all of those meshes. All right, so next up is texturing that little piece that you turn to raise and lower the wrench, as well as that little bolt on the side. I was originally gonna do the exact same metal that's on the top of the wrench, but I thought this little spinning thing should be slightly different. So I decided to choose that steel ruin material that's in the Smart Materials folder, and then applying it to those meshes. And then once again, just opening up those folders and then tweaking some of those settings. Alright, so next up is adding a grid pattern onto that little spinning device on our wrench. So to do that, I'm going to add a fill layer. I'm going to turn off all of those channels so I only have a height channel applied. And I can go over to my textures tab and scroll down to the bottom to find that grid pattern texture. All I have to do is click and drag that onto my height channel. And then I just need to change the scale depending on how big I want those squares to be. And then just start tweaking some of those settings until I find a look that I'm happy with. Once things are looking good, I can right click set that to a black mask, and then rather than being on mesh fill and assigning it to the whole object, I'm going to turn that onto polygon fill and only assign it to those faces. And what would have been even easier is if I did UV cuts along both of those edges. That way when I came to applying this material, I could have just gone to UV fill and clicked it once and filled in the whole area with this pattern. That's why planning out your UVs can really save you a lot of time when it comes to texturing. And then once again, we're gonna add a little dirt and grunge effects. So we're gonna add a fill layer, go to the masks, choose a masking effect and drag that onto our fill layer. All right, cool. So the wrench is slowly coming together. Next up is working on that knife. So for the handle, I'm gonna go to my smart materials folder. I'm gonna go with that iron forge material and just open up that folder and start tweaking some of those settings. Once I'm happy with how things are looking, like usual, right click set that to a black mask, and then I can assign it to those handles. Alright, so next up is just doing that knife blade. And that's pretty straightforward, I decided to go with that steel stain material and assigning it to that mesh. Now, as you can see, there's this little black smudge that's part of that material that's showing up on the side of the blade, and I didn't like the position of that. So to change the position, I'm just gonna open up that 3D projection settings dropdown, and then just change the X offset so I can change that position of that smudge. All right, so the blade's looking much better now. Now I can right click that folder, set that to a black mask, and assign it to the blade mesh. And I almost forgot those tiny little screws on my knife, so I'm just going to go choose that steel material and I can assign it to those small meshes. Alright, things are looking good and we're almost done applying materials to all of these meshes. So next up was doing that cloth handle. So I'm going to go to my materials folder and I'm going to choose that fabric rough material and assign it to that mesh. And then all I have to do is just change the scale so it's much smaller. And once I'm happy with that, I can right click, set it to a black mask and assign it to the mesh. So you probably guessed it, it's time to add some more dirt and grunge. So just like we've been doing, I'm gonna go add a fill layer, I'm gonna drag on a masking effect and we can tweak some of those settings.
Alright, so now that that grip is looking much more dirty and it fits the model a little bit better, now we can move on to those little zip ties. So that's pretty straightforward as well. I'm just going to go choose a plastic material and I'm just going to change that color to more of a black tone and then we can assign it to those meshes. All right, so now all the meshes have materials applied. So now let's quickly jump back into the renderer, take a look and see how everything is looking. And then we can start making a few adjustments. Alright, so I thought it'd be cool to add a little bit of blood on the tip of the blade and on the top of the wrench, just to add a little bit of extra detail. I didn't want to make it too post-apocalyptic kind of zombie fighting machine weapon, but I thought it would just make it look a little bit more cool. So to do that, we're going to add a fill layer. I'm going to change that color to a reddish color, and then I can go choose some sort of brush. I decided to go with some dirt brush. I can start just drawing on this blood wherever I want it. And like usual, I like to draw on a lot more than I'm intending to, and then I can go to my eraser brush and start pulling some of that back. And then if you use different brushes and keep erasing and applying it, you get some cool effects. So let's go ahead and start drawing on some blood on the model. Alright, so the model's looking much better and we're just about finished. I just want to jump back and start applying a few extra grunge and dirt effects. Now I go a little crazy with this model when it comes to dirt and grunge, but I honestly find if you start subtly adding little details like that and start layering them on top of each other, you start getting some really great results. So for the next 5 minutes or so, I'm just going to continue adding some small details and some different dirt and grunge effects.
Alright, so that's basically all of the texturing. So when I stopped recording and I started doing those final renders, believe it or not, I still thought the model was looking a little bit too clean. So I decided just to add a tiny bit more dirt and grunge, as well as some tiny little details like a small PR initial on the side for poly render, as well as some small markings on the opposite side of the model, like some sort of small kill count or something. So let's quickly go over what I did. So for the little PR initials or engraving on the side, I just added a fill layer, I turned off all of those channels so I had a height channel, a color, and a metallic applied, and then just drag down that height slider a little bit so I can engrave it into the metal, and then I went to my brushes, chose a hard edge brush, and I can draw directly into that metal to have that small PR engraving. And because I added a color channel and a metallic channel, I could play around with those colors and settings, just so it looks like there's a metal material that's directly below that paint. So next up were those markings or those kill counts on the other side, and that's very similar. I added a fill layer, turned off all of the channels so I only had a color channel applied, and I can just turn that to a black color and then using that same hard edge brush, I can just draw directly onto the mesh. And I also decided to add a few extra dirt and grunge effects. So if I scroll to the top here, you'll see these extra six or so layers that I added. If I turn all of these off, you can see what the model was like before. And then I just slowly added small little black markings, especially in all the little nooks and crannies, just to make it look a little bit more beat up. So yeah, that's basically everything I did. And then I went ahead and just rendered out some images. So that's the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create this homemade weapon. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. And if you feel like supporting the channel even further, as well as get access to additional content, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And also a really big thank you to Piotr Pabagen. My Canadian accent's probably butchering your name, so I apologize for that, but a big thank you to the artist who created the reference that I used to create this week's model. All right, thanks so much for tuning into this week's video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.